What's your I'm going to marry this person moment? Story 1. I fell in love with my husband the very first night we ever had a conversation. I ended up crashing my motorcycle before we could even have our first date though. My husband visited me every day for a few hours in the hospital. I know now that he is absolutely terrified of hospitals, but he came to see me anyway. When I got out, he took me home and took care of me. He helped me change my bandages from all the road rash I had. I remember the exact moment I decided I needed to marry that man. I was standing in my bedroom in front of a full-length mirror, looking at the extent of the scars that now cover my arms and back. I just knew that there was no way this wonderful man would love a scarred and broken girl. I figured once his sense of duty let him walk away without feeling guilty, he would. So I broke down bawling. He finally got me to tell him why I was crying, and he told me, Scars tell a story, darling. And how boring would you be if you had no story to tell? That was it for me. I'll never love another person as fiercely as I love my husband. I can't imagine my life without him in it. I didn't tell the whole story because it gets a bit long, but I love telling it. So here you go. I was working nights as a bartender. I had just moved to the city and didn't really know anyone. My husband would come in a couple of nights a week with a bunch of the guys he works with. I got to know them a bit, but my husband never said a word to me short of a drink order. Then, on an incredibly slow, rainy night, he was sitting at the end of the bar with his shirt sleeves pushed up the way they always are. He asked me about the book I was reading when he came in. I figured this giant construction worker was just going to tease me about being a bookworm, but it turns out he reads more than I do. We talked about books, then our lives, hopes, and dreams. All of it was just so easy. It was time to close the bar. And I didn't want him to leave, so I let him hang out while I cleaned. He helped, so I offered him a beer. And we sat down there and talked until the sun came up and snapped us out of it. We parted ways out front of the bar, and I already knew I was in love with him. We had set up a date for the following weekend, but then I crashed my car and had to call the cancel. So he came to visit me. I enjoyed it, so I asked him to come again. And it just went on from there. I know he's just the worst, but I'll take one for all of womankind and just stay with him. That guy is the GOAT! I think it would be amazing if we could all find someone who loves us unconditionally, even after we've been through the ringer, whether it's from life experiences or from playing Dark Souls. Story 2 My wife and I have been together for over 6 years now and have known each other for 8. The first year we were together, I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. At a very young age, my mom was diagnosed with terminal illness. It was tough because my sister and I were her only caregivers. We were all quite young, too. My mom was 47 and my sister and I was 24. It's really tough caring for someone in their final days. Between doctor's appointments and making her comfortable, it's a full-time job. And my sister, my partner, and I were all working full-time. But we made it work. My wife was there every step of the way. She endured late nights at the hospital, 911 calls and listening to the doctor break our hearts month after month. During all that, I knew there was no one else I could depend on and trust more than her. Plus, my mom really liked her. Another bonus? When we got married in July, she gave my sister and me two letters from my mom, written before she passed. They were really beautiful. Story 3 my husband and I had been together for a few years and owned a house together, and we had basically both decided we were endgame. But I had huge issues with the idea of marriage-level commitment. This was probably in part because my mom had been married three times by the time I was four, and complicated by the fact that my sister had recently gotten married and then split up with her husband seven months later. And then my dad had also gotten married, and he and his wife had split up within a year. Essentially, I didn't have great marriage role models in my family. Then about three years into the relationship, my husband developed double pneumonia quite suddenly. He didn't even have a cough. It manifested as back pain, but the pain was really because his lungs were so full of fluid. He almost died and spent eight days in the ICU. It was terrifying almost losing him. And I also felt so over my head. He and I weren't even officially engaged, and we were in our early 20s and hadn't really talked about things like wills and medical power of attorney. I just realized how little I would have been involved in his care if his parents hadn't insisted on including me. He was released from the hospital in December of 2008 and said, Hey, let's pick a date. And I was like, bring it on. 
We got married in May of 2009 and we're still going strong. He and I both have chronic illnesses. His pneumonia ended up being the inciting event for his lupus. And four years after he got his lupus diagnosis, I was diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I think we both have a lot of patience and empathy for one another as a result of our own individual struggles. There are days where we both feel terrible. We just try to treat every day like a triad situation. Whoever is in the worst shape gets the most care. And we take turns stepping up for each other. Story 4 As cheesy as it sounds, I just knew from talking to her. It wasn't one moment or thing in particular. She was a senior and I was a freshman in college. We hit it off as friends, but for whatever reason, I never considered her romantically. That was likely because I was a freshman and she was about to graduate. I don't know. It seems silly now. Anyway, we started to talk more and more for about six months, completely platonic and just friends. And one day after we'd talked for like three hours straight, I got back to my dorm and told my best friend, you know, it's so easy to talk to her. I'm not saying I want to go out with her, but I would love to find someone like her. I was in denial. There was an event coming up and all of our friends were taking dates. She texted me and was trying to get me to take one of her friends. I don't know what hit me, but I had a surge of boldness and called her and told her I didn't want to take her friend. I wanted to take her. It freaked her out a little at the time, but I think deep down we both knew we were a good fit for one another. We dated for about a year and a half before I proposed, but to be honest, I knew from the beginning. And the rest is history. Our sixth anniversary is next week. We have three kids and one more on the way, and we're really happy. It's cool to find love like that. I thought those kinds of things only happen in a Disney movie. Story 5 Honestly, it was the first time she hugged me. We weren't even dating at that point. I came from a challenging home environment and didn't receive much warmth or affection. To be frank, I didn't have many friends growing up, which made it a solitary experience. I met her at a bus stop outside of college. In the UK, college is for 16 to 18 year olds. One day, and somehow I mustered the courage to strike up a conversation with her. We chatted during the short bus ride to the next town and ended up exchanging MSN contacts. I was instantly taken with her. A few days later in college, I had just stepped off my bus. It was a gloomy, chilly, and rainy day, and I was freezing and exhausted from a restless night's sleep the day before. She had entered through a different door with her friends, and as luck would have it, we spotted each other near the elevators. For some inexplicable reason, she hurried over to me and wrapped her arms around me, giving me a tight squeeze. It was one of those unforgettable moments. I had never experienced a proper hug before. She held me close and I could smell her hair and feel her warmth. It was simply wonderful. And that sealed the deal for me. About half a week later, I mustered the courage to ask her out. And now we've been together for 13 years. Our 10th wedding anniversary is on Halloween and she's currently expecting our sixth and final child. If I had to live my life all over again, I would still choose to endure every challenging moment of my childhood if it meant I would meet her by the elevator that day. Story 6 We had been together for three years at the time, but my dad had gotten cancer. After a few rounds of chemotherapy, they were ready to remove the sarcoma in his leg, but the surgery was very complex and the only hospital that would perform the surgery was four hours away from me. I was broke, depressed, and stressed out because this was a major deal for my dad and I wanted to be there for him. I asked my boyfriend to please drive me to the hospital and that I'd see him once everything was done and I'd take an Uber or something home. He had just taken a big fancy position at his company as a manager and I wasn't about to ask him to take time off work just for that. He said okay. The night before the surgery, I was packing and to make conversation, I asked him what he was playing because he was using his laptop and I thought he was playing a game. He responded that he had just booked a room in a hotel down the street from the hospital where my dad was going to be. He took four days off work to be there with me and paid for everything I needed, like food and stuff, so I could save my money for the next month's rent. I promised to pay him back, but he refused. I knew I loved him, but that night truly cemented my desire to spend the rest of my life with him. It was a very dark time in my life, and he just made everything so much better. We've been engaged for a year now, and we have three cats. I couldn't be happier. Story 7 In 2016, I had to undergo a 13-hour surgery. Finally, 
I got to go home after spending four days in the hospital, and I had to take two months off work to recover, followed by another three months of restricted duty. I had wounds that required constant care and drains that needed to be tended to and emptied daily, and initially, I was so weak that I needed assistance to stand up in the shower or sit down on the toilet. I even had to sleep in a recliner during my recovery. It was quite a lot to handle. At that point, we had been dating for about two years, and the way he handled everything was incredible. He wasn't disgusted, or at least he didn't show it, and he displayed patience, care, kindness, and gentleness. He stood by me at every single appointment, both before and after the surgery. He would wake up in the middle of the night to make sure I took my pain medication, and he even acquired a set of two-way baby monitors so he could hear if I needed anything. Even my own mother struggled to grasp my limitations and difficulties, but this guy stepped up and did what needed to be done. And let's not forget, he could have walked away at any time if he wanted to. A month after my surgery, I decided to pop the question and asked him to marry me. I figured we'd already been through the in-sickness part, and I wanted to be with him through all the rest of life's adventures. Just two weeks ago, we celebrated our first wedding anniversary. You know you've found the one when you get through the tough times and cuddle through the good. Did these stories make you want to find your soulmate ASAP? Then hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more entertaining videos. Story 8 I had constant anxiety about my student loans and one genuine panic attack about what I'd do if I didn't get into grad school. My bachelor's degree is pretty useless. One day, I finally got that coveted congratulations you're in email from the school I wanted, and I had to tell my then-girlfriend in person. Without missing a beat, as I told her, she lit up, kissed me, and to my surprise, she pulled a bunch of pre-wrapped gifts from her bedroom closet. She had bought me a bunch of gear. Hats, gloves, hoodies, car stickers, ETC for that school. My voice cracked and I choked up and asked what she would have done if I hadn't gotten in. She just said, I didn't have a plan. I always believed you would. I always knew you were good enough. Cue the onions. I didn't have doubts before that, but that made up my mind. She went on to be my absolute rock through a doctoral program and beyond. This woman is better than I deserve. Story 9 My significant other and I both experienced family abandonment, leaving us with no one. Our first date happened to be on Thanksgiving, and spending that day together sparked an instant connection. It was like finding someone who truly understood our pain. We faced some significant life challenges, from dealing with our former roommate in court to experiencing homelessness. Our lives took some crazy turns, but instead of falling apart, we grew closer. One night, after losing almost everything and a few drinks in, she rested her head in my lap and casually said, you know, life is getting pretty wild. How about we tie the knot? I couldn't help but chuckle at the unexpected proposal. However, when I looked down at her and her eyes met, I knew it was the right decision. Both of us had endured a history of turbulent relationships, making this our first genuinely positive connection. It's been two years since we got married, and I've never felt closer to anyone. I love her deeply. Story 10 My wife and I started out as friends. As our friendship evolved into something more, I hesitated a bit at first. Deep down, I knew that if I entered into a relationship with her, marriage was on the horizon. She's just an incredibly kind, caring, and wonderful person, and I was certain I'd end up with her. Going on an actual date felt almost like asking her to marry me. At least that's how my internal dialogue saw it. She stood by me through deployment, and as soon as I returned, I proposed to her. We've been married for four years now, with kids, a house, a dog, and the whole package. It truly is like being married to my best friend. Story 11 When we first started dating, I was terrible with money. I wasn't in a lot of debt, but I was really far behind on it. Like four car payments behind, no savings, had trouble buying dog food, etc. Eventually, I just broke and sat her down explaining how bad I was with money and told her that I'd understand if this was a deal breaker. I then asked for help and handed her my paycheck. If she'd teach me then, I'd learn. Without hesitation or asking more questions, she helped me write out a plan. She dipped into her own savings to get my car payment caught up. She held me accountable for everything. 
Nearly five years of marriage now. With her help, but also my own hard work, my credit score went from 490 to 752. We have savings. I don't fear my debit card getting declined. I answer my phone because I know it isn't a creditor. I have a wife who I know has my back, despite my flaws or mistakes, and has no problem helping me become better. I always knew I loved her. It was seeing that she had zero fear of using her own money to bail me out of a problem that showed me she already planned on being with me long term. Well, it's good to have someone who's always there for you, even when you're broke. Story 12 As cliche as it might sound, my husband had a love at first sight moment when we first crossed paths. He literally stumbled over his words, forgot his train of thought, and all he could manage to say was, your eyes are absolutely stunning. Can I get your email? It's for the club, not for me. We were in college and he was helping out a club at a table when I approached to learn more about it. At that very moment, he knew he was going to marry me and he still swears by it. For me, it took a few months after our initial meeting and I couldn't pinpoint a specific thing that made me realize it. I just knew deep down that he was the one for me. We've been together for almost six years and recently celebrated our first wedding anniversary. My favorite thing about us as a couple is that we never have arguments. We're completely honest with each other. We have profound respect and laughter is a constant. The humor is my absolute favorite part. I guess it's the combination of all these things that made me confident we were meant to be together. Story 13 I didn't even know I wanted to have an actual relationship with him. He's 8 years younger and I was newly single. I thought it would just be for fun and the dark clouds came, as they do. I had an issue with bad anxiety attacks brought on by my ex. He drove to my place almost an hour to run me a bath, wash my hair, and just give me that TLC that I wasn't giving myself. That was the moment I wanted to let down all my walls for him. I knew as he wrapped my towel around me. He had many opportunities to leave, to just dip out, and I would understand. But he got more involved. He never judged. He was just my best friend. He is a blessing in my life. Story 14. My now husband and I have been dating for maybe three months when I came down with the flu. I mean, the worst sickness I've ever had in my entire life. It was a truly miserable experience. And this man, this incredible man, stayed by my side the entire time. He fed me, helped me wash up, emptied my buckets, cleaned the bathroom, laid in bed, and held me while I was feeling quite unwell, rubbed my back, and generally did whatever he could to make me as comfortable as possible. He even kissed me on the lips. That's when I knew he was the one. We've been married for four years now, and I couldn't be happier. He's an amazing man who still takes excellent care of me when I'm under the weather. Story 15 I took my then-girlfriend, who is now my wife, to the movies several years ago. You know how they give you a big tub of popcorn, right? Well, a typical person adds butter on top, savoring the initial layer of salty and buttery deliciousness, only to be left with dry, unappetizing popcorn for the rest of the movie. But my wife decided to show me how to take my popcorn game to the next level. She used a straw to distribute that artery-clogging, mouth-wateringly delightful butter throughout the entire popcorn bucket. And that was the time I knew I was going to marry her. That you had me and cholesterol moment was sweet. It made me melt like butter. Most of the time, it's the quirky habits that stick with you for life. Story 16 My wife and I had been dating for a little over a year, and we pretty much always spent the night at one of our houses. I mean, just cuddling. One day, our routine was slightly different, and we ended up sleeping at our own houses for a night. The next day, the first thing we said to each other was, That was not fun. Let's never do that again. And it became an inside joke for us. Now we're married and we couldn't be happier. Story 17 There wasn't really a single moment for my wife and me. I believe we both knew it from the very beginning. As cliche as it might sound, there was an instant connection between the two of us. Love at first sight, you could say. We became fast friends and did everything together. Here's a funny story. When my wife decided to get married... She went out with her mom to look for engagement rings. She came home that afternoon, showed me a picture, and told me the price. Little did she know I had plans to propose to her in a month, with an elaborate plan all throughout. But that plan went out the window in just 30 seconds. Story 18 We're getting married in two weeks. 
a few things that made me certain. I knew he was the one when I went to his house for the first time and we both cleared the table after dinner and did the dishes together. We had known each other for two years on Facebook, and this was our first together in person, yet we immediately fell into this routine, as if we've been doing it forever, and it continued the rest of the week. I was convinced when we went to an aquarium and I asked him the difference between an alligator and a crocodile, already thinking of the witty answer, one will see you later, one will see you in a while, sure enough, that's the answer he gave me. Story 19. My grandma, whom I loved very much, said, you need to rearrange your life and make a decision with that girl. We had been together for five years and I laughed so hard remembering it that I cried. My wife is amazing and puts up a lot with me. My grandma was showing signs of dementia when she offered me her wise advice. She deteriorated further and gradually fell into silence. She lived for six more years. We went to visit her to share our news that we were expecting a baby, and she reached out and gently touched my wife's stomach, her eyes filling with tears. She passed away the same day she met my daughter. Story 20. My boyfriend and I had plans to attend a party. On my way to pick him up, all I could think about was how much I wanted to stay in bed and take a nap. When I arrived to pick him up, he asked if we could stay home and take a nap instead. We're now happily married and still enjoy our cozy, unsociable lifestyle to this day. That's the kind of relationship I'm looking for. Forget all the Instagrammable places. I just want someone to cuddle, eat cinnamon toast crunch, and play video games with at home. Hey, if you like this video, you're going to love my next one. What was your first kiss like? Story 4 is so sweet, you'll need insulin. See you there.